How's it going everyone? Data here, back again with another NHL 21 career simulation. Today, getting into the career of the most recent 2020 fourth overall selection of the Detroit Red Wings, Mr. Lucas Raymond, currently on for Lunda over in the Swedish Hockey League. He's been there for a couple seasons. He's playing now in his third season. He was coming off 10 points in 33 games, currently has 12 points in 22 games at the time of recording this. He was a fourth overall selection by the Detroit Red Wings. He is a great prospect and I'm very much looking forward to how his career will pan out here on NHL 21. In this simulation, I take control of a Western Conference team. Everything is auto, the scouting, the coaching, the free agency, the, the, the trades. Everything just goes for however many seasons Lucas Raymond plays and we just let it play out no matter what awards he may win, any Stanley Cup championships, any rookie records that he may break, franchise records that he may break, or anything else of the sort. So if you saw my Alexi Lafreniere simulation, you'll know that we take control of a Western Conference team like I just said, but we can't put Seattle into the game just yet because it would create an additional offseason, which would offset the league a little bit. So unfortunately, we stay with the 31 team setting. But of course, when Lucas Raymond's playing in the NHL, there will be 32 teams. So take it with a grain of salt. But for the most part, I'm hoping that this simulation will be half decent, you know. So looking at him right here on NHL, he is a sniper player type I'd probably give him a little better shooting I would give him better skating as well as he has 85 acceleration 86 speed to start off which is great but he is a very fast skater aside from that the 85 offensive awareness 85 deking very nice even defensively 84 stick checking 83 defensive awareness and 85 wrist shot power those are pretty much the base stats that you'll see from him and we'll be checking in on him every season as these stats grow as well as the team that is put around him whether it be on Detroit or elsewhere and just keeping note of any big things that go on in his career. So without further ado, I am very excited to see this career. So let's get it started in year number one. In year number one, nothing really changes here as Lucas Raymond is a 77 overall, medium lead potential how he starts out. He's listed as a fourth line forward, but as you'll see, he has nine points in five games and that is in the SHL playing with Frolunda. He is an unsigned prospect. The Red Wings have not signed him. All his stats remained as you just saw them a few seconds ago. So his overall at 77 is good enough to probably make the NHL, uh, definitely the AHL, but the Red Wings have chosen to keep him unsigned for year number one. So in what actually ended up being year number zero, the Lucas Raymond-less Detroit Red Wings ended up placing 26th in the NHL with a record of 35, 40, and 7. Lucas Raymond ended up scoring 22 goals and 44 points in 50 games with Frolunda, and with that has grown to an 81 overall and is now a third line scoring forward. He will definitely be signed over this offseason as the stats have grown nicely and I'm sure will grow even more by the beginning of what will be year number one. And at the draft, Detroit won one of the lottery picks as they moved up from six to three and with the third overall selection, went ahead and selected a medium elite left wing power forward, Gavin Tamara, generated player, obviously not a real one. EA created him and I'm sure that he will be a first line partner for Lucas Raymond going forward. Heading into what will actually be year number one, Lucas Raymond finds himself on the top line in Detroit. Now the lines are pretty whack, wherein like a guy like Anthony Mantha is playing third line instead of first line. So I wouldn't take too much stock in the actual position of the lineup because it it's pretty fluid throughout the season. But either way, he's starting on the first line with Dylan Larkin and Dmitro Timoshov. He is now at an 82 overall at 19 years of age, ready to make his NHL debut after that extra season in Frolunda. He has four star puck skills, four star senses, and four star defense for a sniper at 19 years of age with 87 defensive awareness and 89 stick checking. That is quite rare and very nice to see. Plus that 89 offensive awareness, the 88 deking, shooting in the mid 80s aside from the slap shot accuracy, 89 speed. Lucas Raymond will tear it up on the Red Wings. I really hope so, especially with Dylan Larkin. On defense, you got uh, Justin Falk is here now, Ryan Murray. Between the pipes, it's 
Thomas Grice backed up by Craig Anderson. They've built themselves a nice little team, and let's see what Lucas can do in his rookie season. The Detroit Red Wings did not do super well in Lucas Raymond's rookie season as they ended 29th in the NHL with a final record of 33-42-7. By the way, just to note, the 18th placed Pittsburgh Penguins, the last team to make it into the playoffs, ended up winning the cup. So hey, congrats Pittsburgh. Lucas Raymond, I believe he ended up playing most of the season on the second line. He ended up scoring 32 points with 17 goals and 15 assists in 78 games. So that means he was likely injured for four. Negative 15 was his plus minus. Hard to do any better than that on such a team. Raymond did grow one overall up to an 83 over the course of the season. And we'll see if he has any more growth for any other attributes over the course of the offseason. The Conn Smythe ended up going to someone who was drafted just a little bit later than Raymond, Alexander Holtz of the New Jersey Devils. And lastly to note, no Red Wings franchise rookie records were broken by Raymond. For the second consecutive season, the Red Wings were drafting at third overall, and with that selection took Shane Wright, medium lead playmaking center, who will be a huge piece of that team going forward, especially if they can get him and Larkin as their top two centermen. Season number two sees Lucas Raymond remain on the first line for the Red Wings. Look at Tamara, the guy who was drafted third overall in 2021, already up to an 87 overall, playing with Larkin at 89 and Raymond, who has remained at an 83 overall. The stats are still looking very nice. Not much change since the beginning of last season, aside from going from 82 to 83. But for the most part, I'd say that the majority of the attributes have remained the same. Top six has Timoshev, Valeno, uh, Zadina, Bertuzzi, Fabry, Sveshnikov, Mantha, Pavelski, and Hiroshi all on the fourth line. That will not stay long term. Don't need to worry about that. Murray, Falk, Sider, Gustafsson, Butcher, and Montour. Interesting defense pairings. And Mr. Darcy, down to an 83, but he finds himself on Detroit where he could definitely grow. Look at Bjorkstrand, healthy scratch. No, that will even out. I hate that it's, they don't start their season off right, but I'm sure it'll even out as the season progresses. So in his sophomore season, we'll see how Lucas Raymond does, and he's definitely being given the tools to get it done on that top line. Year number two sees some fantastic improvement for the Detroit Red Wings as they just miss out on the playoffs by two points as they ended up with 88 points, 42, 36, and 4 was the record to end up in 20th place in the NHL. Lucas Raymond, however, had an almost identical season to last as he once again scored 17 goals and 15 assists in 32 games, this time having a negative 6 instead of a negative 15, 12 more penalty minutes, and doing so in two more games. So pretty weird stat line from him. Uh, I'm not sure what line he played on, so maybe that had something to do with it, but not optimal growth at the moment, and I really, really doubt he played the first line if those were his numbers. It seems like the first line ended up being Larkin, Mantha, and Tamara. I can pretty much guarantee that he wasn't playing in the top six, actually, playing 15 minutes of ice time a night, probably third line with the second unit power play, something like that, but unfortunate that he was not used to his maximum potential but either way he will be heading into the final year of his entry-level deal going to the offseason at an 83 overall with his attributes looking like that hoping for some nice growth over the offseason so that he can get himself a good spot in the lineup to start year number three also just a subtle jab that tamara was the 2023 calder memorial trophy winner All right, year number three sees some big changes for the Detroit Red Wings as Mr. Dylan Larkin is gone. Ryan Donato is now the first line center with Tamara and Mantha, two big power forwards between a two-way forward. Zadina, Valeno, and Raymond are on that second line, hopefully getting him established in that top six with players who fit his skill type, his player type, two-way, two-way sniper, something good passing. Hopefully I get something going. We'll see. On defense, still no big upgrades there. There. And between the pipes, it is now 36-year-old Ben Bishop, backed up by Mr. Darcy. Good defense. Look at these guys. Two great def defensemen, both scratch. But anyways, final season of Lucas Raymond's ELC, 84 overall, still listed as a third-line scorer, 88 defensive awareness, 89 deking, 87 slap shot power, 90 offensive awareness, skating, still at three and a half stars, though. Should be higher than that, but... 
Really, really hope that this is a year of growth, not only for the contract, not only for the team's success, but just for Raymond's success. Let's do it. I don't think it's much of a surprise to anyone that the Detroit Red Wings finished 28th in the NHL in year number three, going 33, 40, and 9. They were the worst team in the NHL when it came to goals against per game, with just over three and a half. However, as anticipated, it was finally a career year for Lucas Raymond as he scored 22 goals and 31 assists for 53 points and he played in all 82 games, bringing his career totals after his first three seasons on his entry-level contract to 56 goals, 61 assists, and 117 points through 240 games with a negative 18 as he finally ended the season there in the positives. Raymond had fantastic growth in that third season as he grew to an 87 overall, now listed as a first line forward as he will be commanding some big money. So with that contract now run out, we will see how much Lucas Raymond signs with Detroit, whether it's a bridge deal or a long-term deal, or if he holds out heading into year number four. At the draft, the Detroit Red Wings had the fifth overall selection, another nice top five pick for them, and they selected, ooh, a high top six grinder, really? Jalen Dietz, that's an interesting selection right there. 67 overall, 17 years old, that high top six potential is there, but for a grinder, that is very interesting. And that is definitely a questionable pick, as the next selection was a 66 overall high top six sniper, followed by a 79 overall medium elite sniper with fantastic. Look at those stats, 44 goals in the OHL, 109 points. And then it was a medium top six forward after that. So time will tell for Jalen Dietz. Heading into year number four, Lucas Raymond signed a four-year, $25.44 million contract with the Detroit Red Wings to keep him on the team with an AAV of 6.36 for those next four seasons. He's playing first line. He's up to that 87 overall, which is beautiful, with Donato and Tamara. Looks like Mantha is gone, so either they couldn't afford him or he just got traded away. I would assume that he left in free agency. Shane Wright has now made the team. He's going to be the future first line center. Defense still looks pretty much the same as always it's the same six people and between the pipes we got Darcy Kemper at 34 years of age and 81 overall backed up by 37 year old 80 overall Ben Bishop so I guess it's the contract yeah totaling just over eight million dollars between the two of them so although his role has dropped from first to second line he still remains an 87 overall headed into this next season I believe most of the attributes if not all of the attributes are the same as at the end of season number three so we'll see how season number four goes for Lucas Raymond, as he is now the guaranteed number one right winger. Year number four saw more of the same for the Red Wings as they finished 27th in the NHL with a record of 34, 41, and 7. It was not more of the same from Lucas Raymond, though, as he put up career highs in goals, assists, and points with 74 points in 78 games, which came from 34 goals and 40 assists. Although he dropped to an 86 overall for some reason, I guess it's because they missed the playoffs, he had some beautiful numbers and brings his career total to 191 points through 318 games. Like we said, Raymond down to an 86 overall for some reason. Attributes look like this, but I'm sure they will bounce back by the beginning of year number five. And at the draft here with another top five pick, this year selecting at number five, the Detroit Red Wings go ahead and select Tanabe Tanabe. A medium elite offensive defenseman, Wilson Tanabe, exactly what they needed on this team. Exactly. 80 points in 72 games over the WHL. Already a 79 overall at 18 years old out the gate. Great potential, and he will grow and be a pillar on this team. Great. Year number five for Lucas Raymond and the Detroit Red Wings sees Lucas remain on that top line at 87 overall with Donato and Tamara. Great center depth, it seems now, as Donato has grown to an 88, Valeno also to an 88, and Shane Wright at an 85, relegated to that third line, although he is definitely the future with that medium elite potential. Zadina, Bertuzzi make out the other wings in the top six. Defense looking okay. That prospect is not up here. I guess he's playing. No, he is a healthy scratch. Yikes. 
Hopefully he gets some play time throughout this season. Goaltending, it is Tuka Rath. They just love old goalies. Tuka, Darcy, and Bishop, the three goalies of the last few years, as he is now starting with Darcy Kemper backing him up. Uh, Raymond at an 87 overall. The defense is now up to five stars. You love to see that. Senses at five stars. Shooting, puck skills, both at four, and skating and physical at three and a half. So wrist shot accuracy looks great at 89. Offensive awareness at 93. You love to see that. And let's hit it. Year number five, we'll see if he can one-up himself after he set career highs in year number four. Boy, year number five sees the Red Wings once again have a bottom five finish as they finished in 29th place in the NHL, going 32, 43, and 7. Lucas Raymond did not improve on last year's career highs, although a 62-point season is still pretty solid in a season like this. 21 goals and 41 assists from him. The first line looked okay, with Donato getting 76 points especially, but definitely begins to drop off after that. Plus minuses weren't great. Shane Wright's line at a negative 31. Tuka Rask and Darcy Kemper were not the duo. Tuka, 39 years old now. They got to get a much better goaltender in there now. So after year number five, I suppose some more disappointed in morale as Raymond drops to an 86 overall once again. Attributes look like this, but I'm sure that they will bounce back for year number six as we are still looking for some playoff action. And the luck did run out for Detroit in the draft lottery as they dropped from 3 to 6 in this draft. Classic Edmonton going from 11 to 1, no surprise. And with that 6th overall selection, the Detroit Red Wings went ahead and selected a left-wing power forward, 67 overall with medium top 6 potential, Mitchell Lavin. Detroit did miss out though on another top 6 forward, a medium elite 79 overall playmaker, a 76 overall medium elite sniper, a 73 overall medium top 4 defenseman, and actually two 73 overall medium top 4 defensemen, another top 4 defenseman. Oh, hey. I'm not the general manager. We'll see how this works out. Year number six has Raymond start out at an 86 overall, surprisingly, and look at this on the second line center, Sidney Crosby, joining the Red Wings for one year at 3.64 million. Shane Wright moved up to the second line, but now finds himself on the wing, Valeno down to the third line. Zadina has dropped to an 83 overall, so pretty weird all around, but the first line still, Raymond, Donato, and Tamara. On defense, Tanabe has grown to 85, which is fantastic, especially for a 19 uh, year old player very very nice to see and great Jan Bednar and Freddie Anderson are the goalies once again going with an old uh, veteran 37 year old Frederick Anderson backed up by Jan Bednar Ooh. stats and all well, the attributes look like this offensive awareness still staying up there at 92 puck skills are fluctuating the physical is fluctuating but for the most part he is his same old self and maybe something gets going with Sidney Crosby Rob Thomas is out here as well on the second line sure. maybe I don't think the playoffs are very likely but hey maybe they'll surprise us well that's a first the Red Wings now finished second worst in the NHL which is the first time that, that happened here in this simulation the Detroit Red Wings finished 30th with a record of 35 43 and 4 nowhere near as bad as the 20 55 and 7 Minnesota Wild but nonetheless another disappointing season Raymond definitely had a down year as he scored only 17 goals and 52 points in 77 games. No one really did anything special aside from Tamara scoring 40 goals. Uh, even Crosby, only 31 points from him. Uh, on defense, that rookie, he put up, uh, oh, only, thir uh, but he was injured. Ah, 13 points in 39 games. So him being out was a big blow, it seems like. And once again, looks like the, oh, actually, the numbers weren't bad. But the veteran goalie does not seem like the way to go for the Red Wings. They need to spend some money in free agency. He will be heading into his final season of his four-year contract next year in year number seven. Attributes, still nothing changing too much. And we'll see how the Red Wings make their changes heading into year number seven. Crosby called it a career with 1,814 points in 1,547 games. Take a bow, Sid. Now, here we are at the draft. The third overall selection for Detroit as they drop from 2 to 3. Not as bad as Minnesota dropping from four to from 1 to 4. 
but um, with the third overall selection, the Detroit Red, Ring, Red Wings went ahead and selected a left wing power forward, medium elite, 79 overall, 18 years old, out of the gate. Great stats in the WHL, 110 points in 69 games. You love to see that. Four and a half star shooting, beautiful, big power forward. With all these rookies, Bob Waite, with all these rookies, you would think that the Red Wings are about to turn a corner, and we really hope so. And as you'll see down there at the bottom, Evgeny Malkin, another Art Ross trophy for him. The man just cannot stop scoring. I don't think I've ever seen Evgeny Malkin not only play this long, but play so well for so long. 99 points and 50 goals for the 40-year-old Evgeny Malkin, who's still back for another season. Pfft, what a tank. Headed into year number seven, it is the final year of Lucas Raymond's four-year contract that he signed all the way back in the old days. And the Red Wings will either have to put up a really good effort or pay him a lot of money if he's going to stay after this season. He's still at 86 overall somehow. Attributes looking good. The stick checking has dropped. Defensive awareness dropped a little bit. But the shooting is still pretty much there. Skating hasn't really changed since he was a rookie, so... Uh, some that's not super realistic I don't find but he's playing with Donato and Tamara on that top line here is Jalen Dietz the high top six grinder who has found his way to the NHL now what kind of numbers has he put up in his junior career in Grand Rapids 36 points 112 penalty minutes interesting interesting four star physical 79 discipline and five star defense okay Defense Tanabe still at an 85, no one really special aside from that, a bit disappointing I'd say on defense, and it is Ve Veni Vevelainen, backed up by 38 year old Freddie Anderson in Nets, so Detroit, I don't know what you're doing, Matthew Boldy's here as well, 83 overall, Tyler Johnson at 82, I'm sure that'll fix itself up once the season gets started. Red Wings gotta put in a good effort this season if they're gonna retain Raymond, and unless Raymond just really loves Detroit, but... I don't know if this is the team to do it. The top nine looks great, but defense and goaltending is not there whatsoever. Let's hope for the best. For the seventh consecutive season here in this simulation, and 11th consecutive season in totality, the last time they actually made the playoffs, which was in 2016, the Detroit Red Wings once again missed the playoffs in the 2028 season, the 27-28 season that is, finishing back-to-back -back seasons now in 30th place, 68 points and a record of 29, 43, and 10. Raymond's numbers were not bad, 68 points with 23 goals and 45 assists in all 82 games. Jumped up to an 88 overall, so I guess he's trying to get paid out there. We'll see if that has any impact on the money that he's going to be making. Donato, another 75-point season from him. The guy putting up big seasons. He has a huge contract as well. Tamara, 48 goals for him. He's making big money. Valeno, only 32 and a negative 45 for Joe Valeno. What? Negative 43 for Tanabe. Moritz Sider would not, in real life, he'd be a lot better than this, so that's why it's not a super accurate simulation, but wow. Rob Thomas, 15 points in 51 games. What a disaster in Detroit. And of course, goaltending, yeah. Both goalies, sub 900 save percentages. Hey, and besides these two guys, they have one more goalie in their system. They have three goalies in the entire organization. Detroit, Maybe go out and get a goalie. We'll see what happens in the offseason for Raymond, but nonetheless, he is 88 overall. Highest the attributes have been yet. Five-star puck skills, senses, and defense. Four-and-a-half shooting, three-and-a-half skating and physical. Very, very nice numbers and perfect timing to ask for a large price tag. But there's a lot of money here in Detroit. Somehow, some way, there's a lot of money. And it's going to cost them if they want him to come back. Dietz, by the way, eight points in 42 games for the high top six draft pick himself. Also, Jack Bugstad's here. 80 overall, medium elite. He was a 12th overall pick in 2023. He's not growing really. I don't know. The prospects are here, but the development isn't. Evgeny Malkin, by the way, calling it a career at the age of 41. The man had 1,780 points. He retired. His final season was 53 points in 63 games. So he was on pace to have another crazy one. I guess he lost some games to injury there. But take a bow, Evgeny Malkin. One of the best to ever do it.
In the draft, Detroit once again dropped in the lottery going from pick number two to five. And with that fifth overall selection, the Wings went ahead and took, oh goodness, a medium top six. Again, a 64 overall left wing power forward. Again, just piling up the same type of prospect in the system. We'll see where Raymond goes this offseason heading into season number eight. Now, unfortunately, here in year number eight, we find ourselves at a bit of a standoff as the Detroit Red Wings went into free agency. They signed Timo Meyer, they signed Nikita Gusev, and they signed Ryan Nugent Hopkins, among others, I believe, in their goaltending category. They got Peter Mrazek back, okay. But that means that Lucas Raymond, who was an RFA, still has his rights retained by the Wings. He is an 88 overall, but he was qualified and was not signed to a contract, nor was he offered an offer sheet from any other team. So a team will either have to trade for his rights this season and sign him, uh, sign him to an offer sheet, or we wait a full season and he becomes a UFA next off season. We will keep tabs on that as we begin simulating through year number eight. By the way, Lucas Raymond's asking price at the moment, just shy of $12 million a year for six years. I see why Detroit does not want to sign him. However, on a one-year deal, a team could get him for 6.65, two years at 8.2, three years at 8.8, four years at 9, five years at 9.2. So I don't know, it's possible. An offer sheet is possible, but will a team do it? That is the question. It is now December 1st, which means that any RFA that did not sign will now be out of the NHL until next season. And yes, Lucas Raymond is still on the books for the Red Wings. He did not sign, nor was he offer sheeted or traded. So I guess it's a lockout season for Lucas Raymond, who's going to go back to Fralunda, play a season with the Indians, I guess. But he's not going to be happy, and that does not bode well for future relations between Raymond and the Wings. I guess we're still following the train wreck story of the Red Wings. Hey, three straight seasons of finishing second last. At least they're not finishing last, though. At least they're not finishing last. 54 points, a record of 23 51 and 8 allowing 3.93 goals per game here's how the points looked for anyone curious my goodness it drops off big time i don't know how these people didn't perform gusev 33 points nugent hopkins 16 and 44 goalies pff, more terrible performances what are these goals against average shocking just shocking nothing else to say but that and for the second straight season detroit drops from two to five once again in the draft lottery and with that fifth overall selection, the Red Wings went ahead and took, finally, a defensive defenseman, 78 overall, medium elite, Dimitri, yes, what a guess, Dimitri Nikitin. Here we are on July 1st in free agency looking at right wingers, and it seems as though Lucas Raymond is not here, so I'm assuming that he got signed during the re-sign phase. And that is exactly what happened. Lucas Raymond came down from his asking price and signed a four-year deal just shy of $9 million per season, $35.94 in its totality. I don't know how they did it. CVY flew out himself to Sweden to talk to Lucas. Lucas. Sweet talked him into another four-year contract, not committing super long-term, but four more years of Lucas in Detroit. Year. Heading into next season, Lucas Raymond is signed, and let's see what Detroit does to build around him. So heading into his eighth NHL season, but year number nine, we'll call it year number nine, even though it's his eighth season with that season off, just keep note of that. We'll, we'll, we'll try to keep it updated there on the, on, the, on the slides in between these seasons. Lucas Raymond, 87 overall, playing with Donato and Tamara, his best friends on that first line. They gotta be good friends for sure if he's coming back. He has some sort of dark magic spell over his soul that Steve Eiserman cast. Defense, uh, they got Connor Timmons here, which is nice. Uh, not too great aside from that. Goalies, please, Gorgiev. All right, Gorgiev. Roll back up, but uh, at least he has the starter potential. Backed up by Vevelinen. Scratches, Bugstad, the, the elite prospect is scratched. Okay, hopefully that'll get fixed. And uh, Lavin as well. I don't know what Bob Waite is doing down here on the fourth line. 86 overall. He was the third overall pick in 2027. Five-star shooting, so... As always, hopefully that'll even itself out, but the lines in Detroit looking a bit wonky. But uh, hey, Lucas Raymond, 87 overall, attributes looking like this heading into this 8th NHL season. Pretty much the same as always. And I would be absolutely shocked 
if the Red Wings did not finish bottom five in the NHL this season. So we'll see. And shout out to anyone who followed along on the NHL 20 Anaheim Ducks series as Eli Tolvanen has found his way over to Anaheim and all just seems right in the world. A very weird season for Detroit in Lucas Raymond's eighth season as they finish 25th, a slight improvement, slight, these are the small victories they're going for, yet they only had 29 wins. It was the 14 overtime losses that gave them a bunch of points, so 29, 39, and 14 was the record, but they actually had the second least amount of wins in the league. Turn some of those overtime losses into wins and maybe you have a good season on your hands. But hey, speaking of good seasons, that's not one that we have for Lucas Raymond. 52 points, 17 goals and 35 assists in 80 games. As it's not a bad season, but for first line right wing, playing with Donato and Tamara up there, maybe Raymond got relegated to the third line. He had, no, he had 18.54 of ice time in, uh, per game. So uh, I think he still stayed on the top six, but I suppose that he was bumped out of the first line. Goaltending, once again subpar for the Red Wings, 34-year-old Gorgiev now in there. And heading into the 2030 offseason, Lucas Raymond is at an 87 overall. I don't know who Raymond needs to be paired with to just go off like he did not too long ago when he had that 74-point season. Actually, it's becoming a little bit further and further away. But hopefully with that understanding that Raymond can excel, the Red Wings will make some changes in the offseason and we're slowly inching closer to maybe getting a playoff spot. Now in his ninth NHL season, Lucas Raymond starts out on the first line with Shane Wright. Wonderful. With Tamara on the left wing, this is exactly what we want to be seeing. Donato down on the second with Dietz and Meyer. Bob Waite once again on the fourth line to begin the season. We know that's not going to last. So as well, it may not last and Lucas Raymond stays on the first line. Either way, even if he's on the second, playing with Donato will be nice since they're used to playing together. Defense Tanabe has never grown beyond an 85 overall, which is weird. He really had that potential. He's kind of just been stuck there uh, aside from him and Timmons it just drops off and goaltending who do we got this season it's still Gorgiev at 34 years of age he what what kind of a contract is this oh uh, yeah yeah Spike Vandermeer he has medium starter potential a third round pick from Ottawa in 2024 he's backing up Scratches, Bukestad, Scratch, don't know why, elite potential, Lavin, Lavin, top six potential, Scratch, Michael Rasmussen, Scratch, I don't know why, but as I've said a hundred times, it will even out throughout the season. Let's just hope that Lucas Raymond does not get shafted by that evening out process. Heading into this ninth season, he remains at an 87 overall. The stats, the attributes are the same as always. 92 offensive awareness, 90 wrist shot accuracy, still the 90 speed, 90 defensive awareness, and the puck uh, skills seem to be solid around the early 90s instead of fluctuating back down to the high 80s. 92 deking, 91 passing, 91 puck control, exactly what you want to see. Not hopeful whatsoever, but let's see what the 2030-31 season has for Detroit. Congratulations to whoever put money on the Red Wings making the playoffs in year number nine because you are now a millionaire. With a record of 44, 31, and 7, the Red Wings finally make the playoffs, placing 13th in the NHL. And much of that was thanks to the team leader in points, Mr. Lucas Raymond, who scored 25 goals and 50 assists for 75 points, a new career high, playing in all 82 games. So it seems as though he stuck on that top line, playing with Tamara and White. Uh, Tanabe having a huge season, 55 points from him. Bob Waite, 32 goals. Tamara, 32 goals. Yeah, how was the goaltending this season? Gorgiev, hey, 35 years old, 903 save percentage. I guess that was enough to squeak them in. However, in their first playoff berth in 15 seasons, 15, the Red Wings were taken out in five games by the Washington Capitals, who were then taken out by the Islanders, who would go on to win the Stanley Cup. In his first ever playoff series at the age of 29, Lucas Raymond put up four points and three goals in five games. To end off this season, he finds himself now up to an 88 overall. You love to see that. So heading into his 10th NHL season, the Red Wings will definitely want to replicate what they just did, and let's hope they have a solid offseason. At the beginning of his 10th NHL season, Lucas Raymond has retained the 88 overall, which is wonderful, playing with Shane Wright and Gavin Tamara on that top line. Dietz, Meyer, Waite, Roy, Lavin, a lot of the same faces, a few new ones, but Detroit, hey, the top six is it's definitely capable of getting some stuff done. 
uh, Tanabe, Nikitin. Defense definitely leaves a lot to be desired. But at 86 overall, if he can repeat with 50 plus points, that could be enough to just carry everybody with him. Goalies, please. Oh, it's still Gorgiev, 35 years old. Now at an 80 overall. Two more years on that deal. And he's backed up by Nathaniel Schumacher, who is a 70 overall, listed as an other goalie, not even AHL backup. He does have medium elite potential. He was a sixth round pick in 2029. So great. He's the future. Fantastic but not ready to be an NHL backup to say the least so at that 88 overall he has fantastic attributes same as where we left off at the end of last season and again I will note that 94 offensive awareness huge when it comes to simulation so I'm looking for a career year from Lucas Raymond would you look at that year number 10 slight improvement as the Detroit Red Wings once again make the playoffs and this time going 12th in the NHL to go back-to-back postseason berths. 44, 31, and 7 was the record. Lucas Raymond set a new career high in points, going a point per game, 81 in 81. Shane Wright, by the way, 98 points and 6 penalty minutes. He won the Lady Bing. But Lucas Raymond, 33 goals, and it was a real team effort. Hua with 77, Tamara 67, Tanabe 67, Wade 63, Matthew Kachuk's out here. It was a fantastic season, the best yet by far for the Red Wings. And thank goodness the Red Wings got a better goaltender. Gorgiev transitioned to a backup role at 79 overall, and uh, Edward Rudder here came over by trade. He is an 85 overall elite goaltender, and he played 53 games going 26, 18, and 7. The Red Wings were looking good as they swept the Boston Bruins in the first round, but unfortunately they lost in a seven-game thriller to the Sabres in the second round, who ended up losing in seven to the Penguins, who lost in six to the Stanley Cup champion. In Colorado Avalanche. It was also the first time that Detroit won a playoff series since 2013, almost 20 years ago, two decades. So 19 years later, the Red Wings are back as they won a playoff series and they are most certainly trending up. Lucas Raymond also kept up his point per game pace as he went 11 points in 11 games. Now at the age of 30, 89 overall, the highest that he has ever been. Puck skills seem the same, but offensive awareness continues to grow up at 96 now. Defensive awareness at 94. This man is finally, finally hitting his stride now at the age of 30. Next season will be the last of that four-year deal that he signed after that RFA status holdout issue. So we'll see if it'll be a third consecutive season of improvement for the Detroit Red Wings and if that'll be enough to make Lucas Raymond want to stick around. Heading into year number 11, Lucas Raymond's on that top line at an 89 overall with 90 overall Shane Wright and 86 overall Jalen Dietz. The guy has never scored more than like 30 points. I don't know what he's doing here, but throwback to when he got drafted. Lucas Raymond, like we said, he's in the last year of his contract, so he's going to be looking for a deal that will carry him into the sunset this season if Detroit is offering it, so we will keep notes on that. Attributes looking fantastic, same as where we left off at the end of last postseason. Five-star puck skills, defense, and senses that make him an elite first-line forward. Defense, 88 overall, Tanabe finally getting some growth and some better support pieces around him. Goaltending, it's Don Dante Goddard in Nets, a second round pick from the Bruins in 2023, signed to a one-year $1.3 million contract. That's a great deal. And then Blake Bloodoff, also an 84 overall, fifth round pick in 2021, one-year $4 million. So we got two 84, goalies, 84 overall goalies. I'm sure they'll split a lot of the starts, but hey, I will take that any day over an 80 and a 79 or whatever else we've been rolling with the last few years. There are the scratches, and we are ready to see what kind of improvement may come from the Wings in year number 11. In year number 11, the trend of improvement did not continue, but the trend of the playoffs did as the Red Wings finished 15th in the NHL with a record of 40, 36, and 6th for a third consecutive playoff berth. It was a weird year for Lucas Raymond, though, as he scored 29 goals but only had 26 assists for 55 points in 82 games. Definitely a down season for him, even some other guys like Bob Waits here. Despite that, the Red Wings did continue the trend of improving in the playoffs as they made it all the way to the conference finals as they swept the Canadians in round number one, took out the Capitals in six in round number two, but then lost in five to the eventual Stanley Cup winning Philadelphia Flyers. It was the first time that the Red Wings made it this far since they lost in the Stanley Cup finals all the way back in 2009. 
In the playoffs, Lucas Raymond was back to his old self, going point per game with 8 goals and 15 points in 15 games. So like we said, not an improvement for the Wings in the regular season, but a third consecutive season of improvement in the playoffs, which is what we're looking for. Raymond ends year number 11 at an 87 overall, and his contract is up, so we'll see what happens in the offseason. Will he be taking his talents elsewhere, or will Detroit pay up to keep their longest serving player on the team? The last three seasons of success was enough to entice Lucas Raymond to sign back with the Detroit Red Wings as he signed a very lucrative eight-year, $88.88 million contract, which will bring him all the way to the age of 39 and be paying him $11.11 million per year. He will be very comfortable, to say the least, as he will likely play out his days with the Red Wings. On that top line, you got Shane Wright and Bob Waite, but as you will notice, there is no more Gavin Tamara for some reason. Now they 88 overall, still with the same pieces pretty much it seems as last year, and between the pipes, they lost both of their 84 overall goalies, as Nathaniel Schumacher is now being fast-tracked to NHL starter, as he will have the net as an 80 overall rookie, backed up by Dwight Schantz, who is 73 overall with fringe starter potential. Lucas Raymond is an 87 overall heading into this 12th season, attributes still looking the same as where we left off. So we'll see if it will be a fourth consecutive season of improvement for Detroit, or if losing Tamara will be a bit of a hit. Tamara, by the way, ended up signing with the Toronto Maple Leafs a six-year, $91.35 million contract. If I were the Wings, I don't know if I would have chosen Raymond over Tamara, but either way, he's gone to Toronto, and Lucas seems to be a Red Wing for life. Year number 12 was by far the best season that we have seen thus far from the Detroit Red Wings as they won their division and finished 5th in the NHL with a record of 49, 29, and 4 for 102 points. Lucas Raymond was one point shy of his career high of 81 as he put up 80 points with 31 goals and 49 assists. He shattered his previous career high of plus minus as he had was a plus 38 in this one, playing in all 82 games. A lot of these guys making me eat my words this season as Sam Reinhardt put up 69 points, Timo Meyer 62. Look at Tanabe with 20 goals and 72 assists for 92 points. He won the James Norris Trophy. Check out the goalies here. Schumacher, 80 overall, had a good season. Not bad for 80 overall. But look at the backup here. 73 overall he grew to. He went 13-4-1 with three shutouts, 924 save percentage, and 2.32 goals against average. What? For 73 overall, that just speaks to the randomness of the simulation. Despite Despite the divisional championship though, the Detroit Red Wings lost in the second round. They swept the Columbus Blue Jackets before getting swept by the Montreal Canadiens, who lost in seven to the Flyers, who lost in seven to the Stanley Cup champion Chicago Blackhawks. Raymond put up three goals and two assists for five points in eight playoff games, but Lucas Raymond will end off year number 12 at an 89 overall, looking great at the age of 32, really hitting his stride, and continuing to do great things for Detroit. Let's run it back, Detroit, and see some more magic in year number 13. Year number 13 sees some more changes for the Detroit Red Wings as it seems like the high top six grinder is gone. But that allows Bob Waite to come into the top six here. The wingers look solid. The center depth is not great as it really drops off after Shane Wright got 35 year old Josh Norris as the second line center. But either way, Lucas Raymond, 89 overall. He is entering this season with beautiful attributes. They don't even need to grow. They're already at the highest point that they're really going to get. So that's always a good thing to have. So I'm expecting another close a point per game season from Raymond now at the age of 32 on defense we have Tanabe 90 overall with Nikitin 84 Dmitry Nikitin that fifth overall pick back in 2029 goaltending here Vyacheslav Smirnov the Ukrainian signed to a seven year 14.585 million dollar deal that is insane money especially for someone who hasn't really proven himself as he has only 198 career games to his name at the age of 27 it seems as though though he was on Tampa or somewhere else where it, the, the, the team was not managing him right because he's got 47 wins in the NHL, then found himself in the AHL. So that's really weird. I don't know how he got that much money either, but here he is, 85 overall Smirnov, the new starter. A bit of a 
curious move with Schumacher in the system, especially he has elite potential. 81 overall, he's going to start growing, and he's not really going to have much space to grow into. But anyways, Lucas Raymond, 89 overall on that first line. As we mentioned, he'll be hitting 1,000 games played sometime this season, and we'll see if it'll be a fifth consecutive playoff run for the Wings. Year number 13 sees back-to-back 5th place finishes for the Detroit Red Wings, also the 5th consecutive season that they made the playoffs. They could not beat out Buffalo for the conference or the divisional championship just by one point. Hate to see it, but that's a very strong division. 47, 26, and 9 was the record for 103 points. One point higher than last season, I believe, so this is officially their best season yet with Lucas Raymond. And speaking of Lucas Raymond, just as we anticipated a very close to point per game season as he went 79 and 82 with 34 goals and 45 assists, check out Tanabe going with 99 points up to a 90 overall. The man is a machine out there. I don't know how he does it. Uh, not to mention this guy, Graham Weller, 47 goals from the former fifth overall pick, another left wing power forward. Look at those shooting categories, 99s across the board. Anyways, we got to check out uh, Smirnov here. So he went 43, 20, and five pretty respectable save percentage not too shabby goals against average passable but a great record from him but in the playoffs it was more heartache in the second round as the wings swept the canadians in round number one but then lost in seven to the buffalo sabers who would go on to the stanley cup finals and then get swept out by the vegas golden knights more heartache for Lucas Raymond specifically as he was injured for four games in the playoffs. Maybe that would have been something that was a that was a series changer if that was in the second round, but still scored five points in seven games. And with the close of the 2034-35 season, Lucas Raymond finds himself at 33 years of age. He just tied his career high in goals with 34. He still has the magic for sure. He's still making a lot of money for sure. So let's run it back again. It's been five great seasons in a row for the Wings. Let's make it six. Year number 14 for Lucas Raymond, still on that top line with Shane Wright and now Graham Weller, the power forward with the five-star shooting, great line combo right there, sniper, power forward, playmaker, love to see it. 87 overall, like we said, puck skills and senses are still there at five stars, defense is dropping a little bit, now down to four and a half, shooting still in the high 80s, early 90s there for wrist shot accuracy, so nothing to worry about just yet. On defense, much, much better defense, some of the best defensive, one of the best defensive cores we've seen thus far far we got a couple francophones here jean Hull and cesar grand pierre so lots of jerseys being sold in, sold in quebec aside from that 75 here but that's okay tanabe is going to carry them all by himself goaltending situation very dicey as nathaniel schumacher is growing he's now an 83 overall but you got the 14.5 million dollar man down at an 83 overall and he is going to be causing some cap trouble to say the least. So with the Schumacher growing, but an already established goalie who's the same overall getting paid an exorbitant amount of money, I hope that this free agent signing will not spell their ultimate disaster down the road, but we will see. Let's try and make the best of it while we still can and go for a sixth consecutive playoff berth. Detroit just keeps getting better in the regular season as in season number 14, they finish third in the NHL, 105 points, reaching the 50 win plateau, going 50, 27, and 5. It's another divisional championship for Detroit and they were very close to winning the East as they were just two points out of the 107 point Pittsburgh Penguins. And finally getting over that point per game plateau, Lucas Raymond set a new career high in assists and points as he put up 84 in 82. At the age of 34, the old man still has it. Shane Wright doing well, that top line with Graham Weller. 66 goals for him. What a line that was. For the goaltending, Smirnov ended up claiming the crease. He improved up to an 85 overall, went 38, 17, and 4. Six shutouts. Schumacher here at an 83. He's going to need a new contract after this year, so really interested to see what's going to happen with the goaltending. But in back-to-back -back seasons, Detroit is eliminated in the second round by Buffalo in seven games after they had beaten the Bruins in seven games around number one. Buffalo went on again to lose to Philadelphia, who went on again to lose in the Stanley Cup final to the Western Conference champion team, this year being the Winnipeg Jets. 
Raymond scored 10 points in 14 games, always performing here in the playoffs. At the age of 34, he still is at 87 overall, coming off a career high. I don't think he's slowing down anytime soon. He has a lot of money that's going to make that's going to be good incentive to make him want to keep playing. Strength is dropping a little bit, I think, down to 81, but offensive awareness, deking, uh, the shooting, it's all still up there. So we'll see if Raymond can keep up these attributes heading into season number 15. His potential has dropped to top six forward now, so we'll see what he's looking looking like to start off year number 15. The 2036 offseason was a tough one for the Wings as we saw their cap troubles really, really have an impact as they lost all their big wingers. They did get a big second line center, Sven Sjogren. First overall pick in 2022, great sniper, five-star shooting, wow, love it. That is a huge development, but they did lose their second and third line uh, left and right wingers. Nonetheless, Raymond Wright and Rasu Rasau are still on that first line. Raymond, he's training hard in the offseason, he's working hard with Gary Roberts, he's still an 87 overall, you love to see it. Attributes still look great. The shooting slightly going down, slap shot power down to 86, but that's okay when you still got the puck skills, the offensive awareness, and all that other good stuff. Defense is strong, though. At least there is that bright spot. And for goalies, Smirnov is here, backed up by Lucas Dexter, as Schumacher is unfortunately gone. He could have been the future, but no more. Dexter, he was a fourth round pick in 2035, has elite potential, but again, 68 overall, should not be here. So heading into his 15th NHL season, old man Raymond just set career highs in assists and points. He's not slowing down anytime soon, and we'll see if he can continue to carry Detroit to greatness. Surely with the C on his jersey. And there it is, 15 seasons later, 17 in total, but 15 with Lucas Raymond. The Detroit Red Wings win the division, win the conference, and win the league as they capture the President's Trophy in the 2036-37 season with 121 points, going for a record of 58-19-5. Raymond was just one point shy of once again going point per game as he had 81 in 82 with 29 goals and 52 assists at the age of 35. The guy's still getting it done. Uh, Sjogren, Sjogren, however you'd like to say it, I'm sorry for that. He replaced a lot of the goals that they missed out with Weller being gone. He had just scored 66. This guy comes in and scores 44, plus the rest of the team got it done. So that was great to see as everyone came together. Between the pipes, Smirnov, 48, 16, and 4 with 5 shutouts, still an 85 overall, but finally playing up to that contract. Dexter somehow at a 68 overall goes 10-3 and 1 just shows how meaningless overalls are in uh, NHL franchise mode and speaking of meaningless numbers, the Detroit Red Wings, despite winning the President's Trophy, drop the first round in five games to the Maple Leafs, who lost to the Panthers, who lost to the Capitals, who lost to the Predators, getting swept. So not only did they lose in the first round, but Detroit were the ultimate losers of the entire playoffs. Raymond was still as consistent as ever, scoring five points in five games in the playoffs. At the age of 35, with that top six potential, he now dropped to an 84 overall maybe some conditioning in the offseason can get him back a little bit higher but he is starting to go downhill which is understandable attributes look like this at the moment but we'll get a better idea heading into year number 16. Big year for retirements, by the way, as Connor McDavid at the age of 40 retires with 2,037 points, 809 goals, and Kirill Kaprizov goes out with 781 goals. We will check out where these numbers put them, even Aho in the all-time record books and NHL stats at the end of this simulation. Year number 16 sees another exodus of players from the wings as those big contracts are strapping them financially. Lucas Raymond, at the age of 35, starts off the season at an 84 overall, playing on that top line with Shane Wright and now Niels Hoglander, who's come over to the team at the age of 36. The bottom six leaves a lot to be desired. The defensive core is quite solid, though, as it's between 84 and 87 within the first couple pairs. Third pair a bit weak, but that's how it is in the future when the money is flowing here. Smirnov 
Kucherov still with four more years at over 14 and a half million. He's at an 85 overall though, so at least he can hopefully play up to it. Dexter backing him up at a 73, as we've seen overall, does not mean much. So I don't, I would not be worried about Dexter. Lucas Raymond now has top nine potential, which means that it would not be surprising to see him drop to an 83 or an 82 over the course of this 16th NHL season. The puck skills are still there at five stars. The sense is at four and a half. Defense at four, as the awareness and the stick checking are still all right. But the physical is dropping big time as it's now two and a half stars. A bit surprising. Don't forget that he scored 81 points last season, so we'll see what he can do with a bit more of a stripped away team at his disposal. Year number 16 was honestly surprisingly a really good year for Detroit. I didn't think they had it in them, but they had 100 points to finish 6th in the NHL with a record of 47, 29, and 6. However, a very uncharacteristic season for Raymond, especially in a year wherein the playoffs were made by the team, as he scored 51 points, 20 goals and 31 assists, over the course of an entire 82-game season. So it seems like Raymond is slowing down a little bit. In the playoffs, it was Detroit's best run of the entire simulation, this time making it to Game 5 of the Conference Finals. They took out the Florida Panthers in 6, the Canadians in 5, but then in a classic matchup, they lost to the Penguins in 5, who would go on to lose, as usual, to the Western Conference champion, this year being the Arizona Coyotes. In those 15 games, Lucas Raymond brought his poise and experience to the table, scoring 14 points in 15 games, tied for the highest point total from a forward, as the two highest scorers were both defensemen here. Very interesting to see. Nonetheless, Lucas Raymond, now at the age of 36, drops to an 82 overall, listed as a third-line scoring forward. Puck skills dropped to four stars, senses are still up there, and physical at one and a half stars. Year number 17 now for Lucas Raymond. Don't forget that this is year 19 of the simulation, but year 17 here with the wings. So retirement could come at any point, but nonetheless, at an 82 overall, he still finds a spot on that top line with his best friend, Shane Wright. New forward to play with them, Calais Janssen, a two-way forward left wing. Uh, complete overhaul of the second line and the third line. We have Zogren, Siogren, who got relegated down to the third for some reason. Zachary Lerreux. And the fourth, Nico Hishie is here at the age of 39. So you may be asking how were the Wings able to afford all these changes? Tanabe did not re-sign with the Wings. That $15 million price tag, it was just too much. We'll see how much he signed in just a second. But Grand Pierre is still here, and so is Jean Hull, the francophone pairing right here. Uh, after that, it drops off a little bit, not as strong as last season. And between the pipes, of course, we still have Smirnov, this time backed up by Mitchell Raffle, a backup who they got for cheap. Lucas Raymond now has bottom six potential, so I would not be surprised if he's closer to an 80 overall by the end of the season. Puck skills four stars, defense down to three and a half. It's really just the awareness that he's got now. Skating, he still has the speed and the acceleration, but the physical is not there. Shooting is still there. Offensive awareness going down a little bit, so I hope that he's been training his mental game. He's been seeing a mental performance consultant, and if he wants the money, he can still come back for a couple seasons after this one, but nonetheless... Year number 17, let's do it. And concerning Tanabe, he signed a three-year deal with the LA Kings, paying him $17.16 million per season. In year number 17, the eight-year playoff run of the Detroit Red Wings comes to a close in devastating fashion. They had 93 points and a record of 43-32-7, which was good enough for 13th best in the NHL. But the Eastern Conference was just so strong that there were Western Conference teams all the way down to 21 that made it to the playoffs. So a very strong NHL this year, especially considering that the President's Trophy winning team only had 102 points. Lucas Raymond ended up putting up more points than last season as he scored 20 goals and 39 assists for 59 points in 82 games. Smirnov played pretty well, but it looks like the issue for the Wings and the reason they didn't make the playoffs was because of their backup goalie, the 82 overall. I guess they should have stuck with the 70 overall, who had a better record, so just really boggles your mind in terms of the simulation engine. At the age of 37, he now drops down to an 81 overall, still very capable for the NHL, but with that bottom six potential, it may continue to drop over the off season, and who knows what decisions he may make. 
year number 18 back at it again 37 years of age for the 2039 40 season lucas raymond is up here still in the top six he finds himself but now on the second line playing with Sjogren and Janssen. Shane Wright all alone up on that top line. Best friends separated from each other. Defense has taken a hit as Jean Hull is the only member of that top four that was fantastic just a few years back as Grand Pierre has moved on. Goaltending Smirnov still strapping them in the cap situation. Two more years on his deal. Uh, Lucas Dexter up to an 83, so I guess they will be sharing the crease this season. But speaking of money, back to Lucas Raymond. He has two more years on this deal couple that with Smirnov and that'll be 25 million off the books for the wings in a couple seasons but Raymond is being paid for a reason and he still has that offensive awareness at 88 he can still get it done although his senses are down to four stars the shooting is just as good as ever wrist shot accuracy at 90 although slop shot power has dropped to 85 skating down to three stars his acceleration has gone down a few attributes and he's not much of a defensive forward anymore aside from his awareness so hey top six minutes are still there he has put up his best numbers within the last few seasons 81 overall or not even though he may drop and uh, there's a good possibility that this is his last season let's make it a good one let's get back to the playoffs and let's get that stanley cup Year number 18 is another shot to the gut as the Red Wings just finished two points out of the Rangers for the last spot in the playoffs in the Eastern Conference. They finished 19th in the NHL with a record of 41, 34, and 7, mostly characterized by a really poor second half of the season. Raymond stayed consistent in that 50-ish point range, scoring 16 goals and 39 assists. It was a career low in goals in 16, but once again, playing all 82 games, the man just does not miss a beat. And with his 18th season coming to an end, Lucas Raymond heads into the 2040 offseason, now at an 80 overall and listed at a depth forward. So with one more year on that big contract and probably a spot in the top nine still available, will Raymond choose to come back for one last ride? Shot blocking at 72, balance at 76, body checking at 74, strength at 70. The man is getting old, but his shooting surprisingly has gone up. It's now back up to four and a half stars. So this offseason will be what decides it. Say it with me, one last ride. Lucas Raymond, 79 overall with AHL top six potential, listed as a depth forward, playing on the second line at the age of 38, year number 19 of his career, year number 21 of this simulation. The Red Wings made a huge splash in free agency getting Zach Oshie, 91 overall, former first overall pick of the Flyers in 2031. That uh, Sjogren was also a first overall pick from the Flyers, so that's funny. They got Witt, Coletta, Bergforce, it was a whole overhaul in the top six. Bottom six leaves a lot to be desired between 73 and 81. These 70s here, not great. On defense, it is just a disaster. And between the pipes, once again, Smirnov is here, down to an 82 overall in the last year of that disgusting contract. And Lucas Dexter seems to be getting the starting role with one more year on his deal. Scratches, nobody special. But Lucas Raymond, I don't know if this is going to be the year for him, but he wants one last shot at the Stanley Cup. Yikes. One star physical, three star skating. These are really scary numbers. But look, 87 offensive awareness, 87 deking, 85 passing, and 88 wrist shot accuracy, 91 wrist shot power. I don't know. I don't know. It's the last year of that huge contract. I guess the money was enough to entice him to come back for one more, plus the guarantee of that top six role. Let's do it one last time. Year number 19 was a success for Detroit as they finished 7th in the NHL with a record of 49, 26, and 7 to find their way into the playoffs once again for the ninth time in 11 seasons after they had missed out on the last two opportunities. It was a wild season for Lucas Raymond as he put up his highest point total in the last four seasons and he did so in 10 less games than usual as it seems as though he was injured for a little bit, putting up 22 goals and 40 assists for 62 points in those 72 games. Oshie was a huge part of their success as he put up 58 goals and 113 points so Lucas Raymond definitely being a benefactor of that. Dexter and Smirnov seem to be able to work together to get some semblance of security between the pipes. And in what would finally most likely be his final time in the playoffs, the Detroit Red Wings fell in six games to the Montreal Canadiens in round number one. 
Canadians lost to the Lightning in five, who went on to lose in the Stanley Cup Finals, be swept, that is, in the Stanley Cup Finals by the Dallas Stars. Raymond, as always, with that high poise, a monster in the playoffs as he went over a point per game with three goals and four assists for seven points in the six games played in the first round. However, to everyone's surprise, including mine especially, in the 2041 offseason, Lucas Raymond does not retire. There were tears in his eyes as he skated off of Little Caesars Arena for the last time, but it looks like he wants one more shot. For his 20th NHL season, Lucas Raymond signs a two-year contract with the New York Rangers at the age of 39. The man is 78 overall with AHL top six potential, but coming off last season, he was able to secure himself a payday two years at $4.430 million. So that is another close to $9 million in his pocket after that huge $88 million contract. Well over $100 million now in his career totals. On the Rangers, the only real players here are Brad Lambert, who is 37 now and Dylan Gunter who is 38 I don't think anyone else is real on the forwards for defense no real people there all generated and on defense oh no that is not good Clint Gormley 70 overall medium elite yikes a seventh round pick last season backed up by Blake Parks 66 overall oh no that does not spell success yikes Either way, pretty solid forward core. Let's see what Lucas Raymond can do on this team. Like we said, he's coming off a great season. It's his 20th now in the NHL, and fans just want to see him succeed. So attributes, I don't even know what to say about them anymore. Two and a half skating. The man can barely stand on his skates. He's somehow become like a golfer in his old age where his accuracy has gone up, but his endurance has gone down. So, bop, three-star puck skills. The senses are still up there. The man loves defense at 90 awareness, but doesn't like to block those shots. Let's see what happens in season number 20. Well, it looks like those goaltending concerns were pretty valid, as in his 20th NHL season, Lucas Raymond and the New York Rangers finished 28th in the NHL with 70 points and a record of 29, 41, and 12. By the way, Detroit finished in 9th. Raymond understandably put up career lows with 13 goals and 24 assists for 37 points in 75 games. Now at the age of 40, down to a 75. Still overall. one more year on that contract, but even if he were to come back, I don't think it would be in the NHL. He would likely be relegated to the American Hockey League. So attributes look like this. We'll get another look in a second if we're at the retirement screen. And 22 years after being drafted and 20 NHL seasons later, Lucas Raymond calls it a career. Really weird of him to go out with the Rangers and not just call it after Detroit, getting like weird Martin Brodeur vibes, but 1,605 games played. I'm sure that puts him in the all-time records. We'll check out the, the NHL's record book in a second. 467 goals with 757 assists for 1,224 points. In the playoffs, obviously, all with Detroit. He played 86 games and scored 76 points, so very close to point per game, you know, just 10 points shy. Pretty solid. He was always someone you could count on when it came to the playoffs. Raymond never got to play more than 15 playoff games in a single postseason. And back to his attributes here, even going into retirement, he has great offensive awareness and poise. The shooting category is most definitely there, but it was really the skating and the physical that drained his overall. 69 shot blocking, 74 stick check. I guess he was just starting to lose his touch out there, but at 40 years of age, you can't really blame him. He only had one season that was over a point per game when he scored 84 points in 2035-36, but he did have four seasons of 80 points or more. Concerning the goals that he scored, he had four seasons of 30 goals or more. His career high, he did it twice, scoring 34 goals, 10 years apart in 2024-25 and 2034-35. And his highest assist total came in 2035-36 when he got 57. Other stats in his career include a plus-minus of 75, 647 penalties, penalty minutes, over 4,000 shots where he was effective on 11.6% of them, 73 of his 467 goals were game winning, 61 of them were on the power play, he had about 1,000 even strength points as 227 came on the power play, zero in his entire career shorthanded. 
over 30,000 minutes on the ice and 2,407 hits. As we said, he never liked blocking the puck when, with the 318 blocks only. A lot more takeaways than giveaways, which is great for those advanced analytics. Although it was never going to be easy or really expected that Raymond would break any franchise records on the wings being an original six franchise with Gordie Howe and Steve Eiserman, Lucas Raymond was the current holder of the points, seasons played, assists, games played, penalty minutes, and goal records of active players on the wings. The only one that he was really kind of close to breaking was Gordie Howe's games played record, which would have taken another couple seasons. Over the course of the simulation, no season records were broken aside from Graham Weller breaking the goal record in a season with 66 in 2036. No rookie records were broken and no single game records either. Looking here at NHL career records, uh, Lucas Raymond's just over 1600 games played would not put him in the top five, but considering the current day NHL plus other generated pl pr uh, players that would find their way into it, I would assume that he would be somewhere in the top 20 of all time. The games played for goalies is glitch, so don't worry about that. Alex Ovechkin ended with the most goals with 932 in a career. Patrick Laine, Cole Caulfield, and Kirill Kaprizov coming up behind Gretzky, but no one was able to pass him for number two. Most points, Connor McDavid got second with 2,037, just the second player all time to reach the 2,000 point plateau. McDavid also third all time in assists. Goalie records, none of those seemed to be broken. Most 50 goal seasons, Kaprizov with 10 right behind Ovi who finished with 11. A generated player down there also with nine. Most 100 point seasons, McDavid tied with Lemieux for 10 all time. And no other season records really broken. These are pretty impossible. Gretzky and Lemieux just oof, bellows. And big shout out, by the way, to Zach Wierenski. Somehow, I don't know what he was doing, but five games away from passing Patrick Marlowe for all time, the all-time games played record. So a very fruitful career, it seemed like, for Zach Wierenski, as 1-2-3 in 2042 is Marlowe Wierenski and Thornton. So it was quite the career for Lucas Raymond as he was drafted all the way back in 2020, had the one season in Frolunda, the one year of the holdout, but 20 NHL seasons played throughout the 22 years as an NHL member. He goes out as a very respected player, lots of games played, his best seasons coming closer to the end of his career as well. He was a Detroit Red Wings legend being enshrined with all the big names up there. I'm sure that his jersey would have been retired. I'm sure that he would have been the captain as well as he was just a couple seasons uh, shy of breaking Gordie Howe's games played record. No awards to show for it, but lots of love from the fans. Unfortunately, that big contract to Raymond and that goalie were what strapped their wings. Uh, even after they left in that last season with the Rangers, the wings dropped in the second round, so no success from them. Maybe a bit more down the road. So that does it for the career of Lucas Raymond. I could see him having a long, fruitful career with Detroit. I, I'm going to be curious to revisit this video in a few years, maybe even many years, to see how he does down the road. But if you enjoyed the career simulation, please leave a like. It's a lot of work to do all this, sitting through all the simulations and doing all the editing, so it would be much appreciated as well as if you're not already, go ahead and subscribe. Doing career simulations, NHL franchise mode, be a pro, MLB franchise mode, a lot here on the channel. So leave a comment what you'd like to see on the channel and also leave a comment who would you like to see a simulation of next. And let me know, did you enjoy this kind of more in-depth look at the player and the team that is surrounding him or would you prefer like some other great youtubers do where they just focus on the player and they get it done maybe in 20 minutes so once again thanks so much for watching links for everything down in the description for the twitch page the twitter page and the discord server stay safe enjoy the christmas season and i will see you in the next one